As we're getting ready to have our shepherd selection process in January, one of the, the lessons that we want to put out before you is a, a, a lesson on prayer and fasting. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I was supposed to do it last week, but Gary covered down for me. Somebody gave, somebody gave me the flu. <laughs> And then I, I, in turn, tried not to give the flu to my wife as she came back from Montana. And luckily, she's not gotten that, so, so we're, we're grateful for that. But today, we're going to talk about um, prayer and fasting. And so, um, you know, prayer, prayer is a way that we communicate with God. And, um, you know... <coughs> Prayer can be a challenge for for all of us at certain times in our lives. Prayer, prayer. I don't, I don't know. Sometimes with me, it feels like it gets kind of repetitive. Sometimes, um, and then there's other times where I just I don't know what to pray. You know, there's 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 struggle and there's things going on in my life, <laughs> and there's things that you're just like, oh Lord, I I, I don't know what to pray right now. And so, you know, prayer can be a challenge. Um, what's also um, a challenge is trying to give a class on prayer. <laughs> and then looking for verses in scripture on prayer. And there are a lot of scriptures on prayer. So trying to go through the, that, those scriptures and look at those scriptures and trying to figure out which ones do I want to use in a class. Because I can make this entire class just reading scripture after scripture after scripture to describe prayer. Hmm. And not, not say another word about it, just what the word says. And that to me is awesome. That there's so much scripture, I can really do a class just in nothing but scripture. <clears throat> and so, as I went through, I'm, 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 I'm actually glad that I had another week to, to look at this and to try to figure out how to um, speak to you today about prayer. Um, God wants to know us. God does know us. And prayer is that way we communicate to him. And I feel like through his spirit, he communicates back to us. Um, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ. And I'm going to go to Philippians after I put my glasses on. <laughs> there it is. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. <clears throat> Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer. Prayer is powerful. It's 
spending time in prayer is not always easy. Making time for prayer is not always easy. We're so busy. We got things going on. We got stuff. We just got stuff. And, and prayer is not easy. But you know what's pretty awesome is in Scripture, Jesus teaches us how to pray. He also teaches us how not to And so in Matthew 6, starting in verse 9, he teaches us how to pray. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So what do we see in how Jesus teaches us how to pray? What do we see in that? First, he acknowledges the the greatness, the holiness of God. Acknowledgement. God's splendor and glory. And we should be before him in humble adoration. For he alone is worthy of worship and praise. What else do we see? Forgiveness. You know, Adam, his prayer also short. Hmm? I'm going to get that. That's fine. No, no, you're good here. You're, good. That's, you're, you're absolutely correct. It's short. Were you going to expound on that? Or are you just. If you're going to expound no, on you, it, then I won't. No, no, you, you go ahead. No, I don't want to make it long. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we see in that prayer? Petition for the things we need. I'm sorry? Petition for the things we need. Petition for the things we need. So, so, so there's asking involved. Maybe, maybe asking to be a better Christian example and all we say and do. Maybe asking to help us figure out how to extend grace, mercy, and love to others. He qualifies, he qualifies forgiveness. Forgiveness. To me. Absolutely. Is there any confession in that? Thankfulness in that prayer. <coughs> what about, go ahead, I'm sorry, Mr. To deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. So, so that one, that part of it's interesting. When, when, I, when I was studying this, <coughs> deliver us from the evil one. We're, we're asking, we're asking God to invoke powers to help fight Satan, resist temptation, and stand firm in our faith against all spiritual attacks. So if we look right before that prayer, a little background, it had been a year from the time that Jesus was baptized in the, in the, by John at the Jordan. And in the, those months, the disciples had walked with Jesus, and they had often heard him pray. And they were 
pretty impressed by the fact that his prayers were different from the Pharisees. When Jesus prayed, his prayers were warm and intimate, personal. But when the Pharisees prayed, they were pretty impersonal and pretty static. So this prompted them to ask something. <clears throat> to ask, Lord, teach us to pray. So they see a difference in Jesus from the Pharisees, and they want to know how to be that different. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy that they asked that question, <laughs> you know, um, because in, in, in the rat race of life, our prayers can very easily be <coughs> just a nighttime letter to God, or in this day and age, a quick text <coughs> of our wants and wishes to the Heavenly Father. We can neglect the elements of our relationship with God, and if we do that, we'll remain impoverished and isolated from the warmth of His presence. If you look at how Jesus prayed, <clears throat> that forms for us a backdrop of a relationship with God that we desperately need. In public, his prayers were short, but in private, think about when he was in private, they were intimate, long, weeping, struggling, <clears throat> personal, hugely personal. You ever notice that sometimes our prayers are lengthy <clears throat> whenever we're in front of our family or in front of our brothers and sisters or because we have been tasked by Julda to pray during service. <clears throat> but they're pretty short and to the point in the privacies of our own homes. Also, there's tradition. So we all know yes, you were raised in the Church of Christ. There are traditions. There's phrases that I can remember as a child that the men, I, it seemed like they could not not have those phrases in their prayer. <laughs> Hedge of thorns to protect us. That always pops into my head. There's so many phrases. I <laughs> right, right, right. And, and I'm wondering, visited a community church, I was like, I don't hear the traditions that I remember growing up hearing. And, and it was it was like a wow. It was it was just a different kind of prayer than I remember as a child yeah. hearing. I don't know how to phrase that without offending anyone. But it was it was You yeah. just offended every guy in the church. And growing up. Oh they were good here. Other churches. And actually, uh, in defense of the guys, you know, it's difficult to get up and pray in, in, in front of people for, for, for a lot of men. It's difficult to do that. And the phrases come in because it's easy to do that. It's been bad. It's an okay phrase. Guard, God, direct us. Uh, if you can get up there and do those, from memory, because it's difficult, which is why I I love that we have so many men who volunteer in two different areas who will never ever hear me force or highly persuade anyone 
to do that because of the difficulty in doing it. I would rather have the same guy who loves doing it and is easy doing it every week than people who do not look forward to getting up there. Just Gary's thoughts. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, separate and apart from all those comments, I don't recall ever saying a phrase that's ever been used before. Adam, Adam, you say, yeah. I, I want to say honestly that I am very impressed with the men who have communion thoughts, all the different ones who pray. I am continually kind of blown away by how, what a good job they do. I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it. Oh, you guys, we really appreciate y'all. And you can tell you put a lot of time and thought into what you're doing, a lot of planning, and you're very sincere and I have to apologize. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Larry. The situation in small congregations to where the wives actually had to teach the husbands to pray because they never got it. It wasn't comfortable. They just farmed and that's all they did. They went around people. And so that's the best they could do in those circumstances. So yeah. that, that carried on. When the, I just remember when, like John McFarlane uh, mm -hmm. prayed, and he said something about the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. was in him, and that's how his prayers came out. And uh, yeah, of course, you know, I don't understand it, the whole Holy Spirit, but that's how he carried it. He said. Right. So, do you think you have when you're praying, you're praying to the Holy Spirit or with Him, or? I, I feel like whenever I pray, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it in a few minutes if I get that far, is, is praying for me is very emotional because it's a personal connection with my Father. And so um, that emotional part of it sometimes stresses me out yes. because... <clears throat> Showing that emotion sometimes, I feel like, detracts from what I'm trying to talk to God about. And, but I also feel like, in the same respect, that that emotion is spirit-driven, because I am talking to my Father. Mm. And I am trying to have that personal connection with Him. But I'm doing it in a, in, a, in a sitting to where it's, and I don't want to use corporate as, as, as the word, but I'm doing it in, in a sitting to where, like you said, it's, it's on behalf of all of us. And so trying to not let the emotion overshadow, okay, well, Adam's emotional, but to be able to convey to God on behalf of all of us. It, I think uh, I guess I'm kind of summarizing several points that were made because I, I think they're, they're really good ones. 
is that uh, it, it is, I, I often feel, I think, like, like you kind of conflicted, right? Because I want to prepare, you know, for it, but I also want to be authentic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so sometimes you think if you're authentic, you know, you shouldn't have prepared notes. You should kind of let the spirit move you to, to, to think. But you want it to be, you know, intelligible. Right? Right. You want it to be meaningful to everybody else. But then at the same time, you want it to be a prayer, not to be a sermon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, and I think I, I have maybe fallen into that, you know, sometimes. So it, it's 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 all these things you're trying to balance, and mm -hmm. and you want it ultimately to be heard, you know, <clears throat> pleasing to God and heard by Him on behalf of the congregation. But uh, it, it's yeah, it's tough. It is. <laughs> it is. And now when you talk about, you know, you talk about prayer, there are all kinds of prayer, yeah, yeah. different prayers. Oh, yeah. I remember the very first time I was asked to pray at a funeral. Hmm. That was one of the terrifying things. What do I pray for? Yeah. You know, I was a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so terrified of that. What do I say? Who am I praying to? Because, you know, again, uh, it was the various types of prayer. You have to have had some relationship or something of the event so that you could help. And a lot of times you, you're not praying, say, for instance, where I was praying for a dead person. You're not praying to that dead person. Right. They can't hear you. Right. You're praying to the people that's there. So you have to word your prayer such that you're trying to console them. Right. That's a that's a particular type. But if you go to another type, it's a whole different way that you prepare yourself to say that prayer because it's it's your audience. Mm -hmm. you, you know, even though you were praying to God. For the people, but it's just it's it's hard to sometimes just on the spur of the moment just get up and say a prayer. Yeah. Because you don't, you know, you don't know all the circumstances and everything. So you, you have to have some preparation or something to articulate a particular type of prayer so that your audience can get something from it. Because you're praying to God, but you're also praying for the people. Also, so you have to word it in a manner that you know you you help enough those individuals, right? Jerry, you say, well, I think you got to simplify. Remember what your age is on how to pray. <clears throat> and today's world, we have too many antichrists out there. You need spiritual leaders. You need to look for spiritual leaders. Don't go to the Charles Larry and all that. So would you agree? Sometimes we uh, we tend to pray about the same old things the same old way. <coughs> Sometimes it happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, the good old folks were ruler for the same thing. Yeah, over and over and over. Over and over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, to, to Terry's point, I, I do feel like the spirit, the spirit's presence, absolutely prompts prayer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I just this is a, I heard it's not my comment. I just want to pass it to you. I heard Jim and William speak one time, and you know, if you never heard him, you should you should look it up. <laughs> he's, he's got reports, but he described our relationship with the Spirit and with God and with Jesus as though they were whispering in God's ear. Can you hear me out? One in one ear, one on the other, and and here you are down here trying to articulate what's going on in your life, what's happening, and you feel hopeless, you can't express it, but they're up there whispering in God's ear. And, and it motivates me to yeah. think that way. Yeah. To think that, that I don't have to get it perfect. Right. They're going to they're gonna take care of that. Absolutely. Isn't that the job of the Holy Spirit, too? Yes. Just to represent so, him. So, so the, Spirit's, the Spirit's presence, I feel, prompts prayer. If, if you have turned from living for yourself and your sin and you have trusted Jesus and his work to make you right with God, God has given you the Holy Spirit. Here's the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus 
So that praying without variety sometimes is, is, is praying in vain. <clears throat> Matthew 6, verse 7, when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. So right there, he, 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 he taught us how to pray, and right there, he's teaching us how not to pray. And so sometimes when we're in a public, public prayer situation, I know me personally, when I sit down after saying a prayer sometimes, sometimes I feel like, oh my gosh, <laughs> man, that was, uh, that, that was, that was, that was pretty in vain for, for what I was trying to convey. I, I used too many words. I, I, I went... I went too far. I didn't. I, I, I should have kept it short, sweet, and simple, and to the point, and, 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 and talked to God. Hey, Adam. So, what Christy said there, you know, yeah. we have really good, authentic oh, yeah. prayers yeah. here. And not only that, what's up further, our communion thoughts mm -hmm. as well. I don't think I have ever been to a place in all of our travels all over the place mm -hmm. where our Communion thoughts are as I will say that other people weren't sincere. I'm sure right. they were, but yet heartfelt sincerity, not traditional. Mm -hmm. Somebody I've had a couple of people say, you, you think maybe they should shorten that so it gives you more time to preach, or you don't go <laughs> No. No, I would never ask that. I mean, <clears throat> think about the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection. Right. And I'm going to say, can you cut it short? Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, I have to admit something to y'all real quick. So so in preparing for this class, I was I was focused, focused, focused on prayer and fasting. And uh, trying to teach on fasting for me is not easy because, uh, as I'll share with you, I, 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 don't, I don't know that I've actually completely um, properly understood it and, and properly done it. But um, last night, we were driving up to the Puniac to see the lights at the lake, and we're sitting in traffic, and I've been focusing on class, 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 and I got it wrapped up Saturday uh, midday, and I was like, okay, I'm, I feel somewhat confident in being able to, to teach this class. Sitting there in traffic, trying not to get frustrated, trying not to be upset because there's so much traffic. I have communion thoughts tomorrow. <laughs> I had communion thoughts tomorrow. And so I'm sitting there trying not to be, you know, and, and so now I'm, I'm, I'm the, the anxiety starts building up. I've got communion thoughts tomorrow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so walking around, thinking about it, trying to, re, trying to get, you know, go back through things and the, the devotions that I've read throughout the, the week and trying to figure out where, where I felt the Spirit talking to me and felt the Spirit upon me about certain things. And so sitting there having, having dinner, I went through a couple of devotionals and I was like, yeah. That, that's that's this is a common theme that I've been feeling this week. Let me let me jot some some notes down, email it to myself so when I get home I can print it out. So uh, yeah, there's some anxiety whenever it comes to trying to do those things. But yes, I I, I agree. I, I think we have some pretty amazing men who are able to do that. <clears throat> um, so Adam, yo, yes. yes. I don't, no, want to, getting... I don't want to make you go long. No, you're... Uh, <laughs> but you know, Terry mentioned John and his ability to, mm. to feel the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah. Which I think we all, I mean, there's not a person here that didn't admire you know, his relationship with God. Uh, in 1 John 5, and this is what I believe that, that John felt, ironically, in 1 John 5. Uh, it says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask, anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that, that we have what we ask of him and whether I was having prayer with John one on one or he was leading a prayer up front he was very consistent he knew God was listening and, and I, I quite often struggle you know just not knowing that God's listening or that I'm not praying the right way 
Uh, John always knew that. He always had that expectation. And I, I think, Terry, as you, as you as you think about the Holy Spirit, you have to have the expectation that the Holy Spirit's there. That the Holy Spirit's listening to you. Uh, and, and I think as you do that, you'll feel it. There are many areas of our lives that, that tend to be pretty consistent. Um, family, the future, finances, work, different concerns, whatever's going on in the world, current crises that are going on. And, uh, you know, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with those things that are upon our heart or those things that we devote in prayer to God. Um, if you, if you, if you, I try to boil down and not minimize this prayer, but if you look at this prayer, give us, forgive us, lead us. And that's, that to me is, is huge whenever you pray. Give us, forgive us, and lead us. But I love how it begins. Our Father. Our Father. <clears throat> Quite often, Jesus used the term my, my Father, whenever he was talking about God. But in this prayer, he starts out, our and I think that reminds us that God is the Father of all who have come to peace with His Son through the cross. When we pray power, we step into fellowship with the disciples who walk with Jesus. He, he, he was just as important in their father as much as he's our father. And so thinking about when we pray our father and we look at that and worship in the spirit and fellowship with brothers and sisters, we're doing that with them all over the world. <coughs> I just think it's beautiful the way he started with our father. <coughs> So some of us, I think, struggle in, in, with, with, with prayer, and, and Lynn shared with me recently this, this book, Praying the Bible, and, and, and I've read through it, and um, I really think it's, it's pretty cool. If you ever find yourself struggling in prayer, one of the, the, the things that they talk about in here in, in Praying the Bible is pray through a passage of Scripture. And they give an example in the book of, of, of the 23rd Psalm. And uh, in, in reading his word and being able to take his word and pray through his word. So I'm going to read a couple of them. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. So you can say, Lord, I thank you that you are my shepherd. You're a good shepherd. You have shepherded me all my life. Please shepherd my family today. Guard them from the ways of the world. Guide them in the ways of your, your word. Lead them in, not into temptation, but deliver them from evil. I shall not want. Lord, I thank you that I've never really been in want. I haven't missed too many meals. All that I am and all that I have has come from but I know it pleases you that I bring my desires to you. So would you provide the finances that we need for these bills or for this school or for whatever? He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Green pastures. Maybe that's a Bible ministry that is on your heart. Maybe it's a teacher or a pastor or a preacher or a minister. And you pray that the word of God feeds them. He leads me beside still waters. Lord, lead me in decisions I have to make about my future. 
I want to do what you want, but I don't know what that is. Please lead me into your will in this matter. Please quiet the anxiousness of my soul about these situations. I've, I've, never, I've never prayed scripture before, but reading this book opened my eyes to it. And that I'm intrigued and want to try it, uh, I, I can only see it, see my prayer life getting better. So just as a suggestion, if you find yourself struggling on how to pray or what to pray, open the Bible and pray through Scripture. Take Scripture a little at a time and pray that Scripture. Yeah, Bernard. Yeah, one of the things, as you get older, I'm not saying I'm old, you get older, you know you learn and experience things, and that's one thing that I have started to do. Instead of getting out of bed in the morning and just saying a prayer, read scripture first, and you can apply to that scripture while saying your prayer, because there are a lot of things we don't think about, but if you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in scripture or whatever, you may think of something and go to scripture and read it. That will enhance our relationship with God and how to communicate with him through scripture. So it's a way that you can apply scripture for a lot of things. And I love the song, I, I, I go back and say it all the time, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Touch my eyes that I might see all of your goodness, grace, and power. So if you let that Holy Spirit guide you in your decision making, that's where we have to lean on the Holy Spirit to direct us in the right direction to make decisions. And the Holy Spirit will guide you in those thoughts because I definitely believe in the Holy Spirit and how he touches and touches our lives and how he can interact with you in helping make decisions, and you, when you make a decision, you can feel that it's from God. It's not anything I can do. It's that spirit that's working through you to make those particular decisions. And I love that it's the living word because you can read through a you can read through a scripture and pray that through that scripture, and then months down the road, go back to that scripture again and, and have a totally different prayer because it means something totally different, or you you, you get something more out of it. I love it. Um, so the emotional aspect of it. Um, I, 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 I get emotional whenever I truly take the time to communicate with God. And, and <clears throat> sometimes that has made me feel like that it's, um, it brings me, it, it makes me feel closer, it makes me feel um, spirit-led, because I, I feel like as, as people, whenever we're emotional, when we communicate, there's more truth and understanding and there's, there, there's more conveyed. It's not just saying these words and then saying amen. Um, Hebrews 5, 7. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. There's nothing wrong with emotion in prayer. Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with emotion in talking to God. There's nothing wrong with being emotionally connected with your Father through the Son and with the Spirit. There's nothing wrong with that emotion. I have to tell myself that. <laughs> so now let's talk about fasting. 
So that's the one that that I was just like, okay, I did not completely understand and have not understood and still need to do some more studying about. Um, because I don't feel like I've been doing it correctly. <clears throat> so when I fast, and I've fasted a couple of times, um, and, 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 and I'm not being flippant, I'm, I'm a couple of times. Um, and some of those times have been unintentional fasting. Like, I've, I've been in overseas, and I've worked <clears throat> multiple days with no sleep and no eating, and the biggest thing that we tell each other is hydrate, 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 hydrate. And so I'm <coughs> hydrating, but I find myself not eating. And I'm able to make it through and do what needs to be done. And I haven't eaten anything. And sometimes I figure, I, find, I come to find out that it's been a couple of days that I haven't eaten anything because I've been so focused on getting.